Today we will discuss about lumbar disc prolapse. Lumbar disc prolapse is a very common cause for low back pain. So what is lumbar disc prolapse? It is a medical condition affecting spine in which tear in the outer fibrous ring that is the annulus fibrosus of an intervertebral disc that allow the nucleus pulposus that is the central portion of the disc to bulge out beyond the damaged outer ring. So we'll, now we will discuss about the anatomy of lumbar spine. It has got L1, L2, L3, L4, L5 vertebras and it has got an intervertebral disc in between the vertebras. The vertebra has got a vertebral body, pedicle transverse process, the lamina and the spinous process. And it has got a vertebral foramen through which the spinal cord travels. So here you can see the spinal cord uh, through the intervertebral foramen there is a nerve root exiting from the spinal cord. Here you can see the neural foramen through which the nerve root exiting from the spinal cord. So here you can see from e, between two vertebra there is one exiting nerve root and between two vertebra there is one traversing nerve root. So what is this exiting and traversing nerve root? Between L4 L5 vertebra L4 will be the exiting nerve root and L5 will be the traversing nerve root. So lateral disc and far lateral disc will affect the exiting nerve root in L4 L5 and if it is a central that will affect the traversing nerve root. So in the vertebral disc anatomy it has got inner nucleus pulposus which is a soft gelatinous structure and there is an outer fibrosis that is annulus fibrosis which is a fibrous structure. So the inner portion that is a nucleus pulposus contain more proteoglycan and it has got a more water binding capacity. Here you can see one herniated disc that is impinging the nerve root. So that will produce radiculopathy. So what are the risk factors that cause herniated disc? Usually the sedentary lifestyle, bad posturing while sitting and repetitive strenuous activities like lifting heavy weights from the floor. That is a pathophysiology of disc herniation with the aging, the vascular channels start to fail and the vascular diffusion of nutrients decreases to the nucleus pulposus that will result in decreased concentration of proteoglycan. As the proteoglycan decreases, the water binding capacity of nucle nucleus pulposus will decrease and the nucleus become more fibrous and stiffer. When the nucleus become more stiffer, it will not be able to bear weight and transferring weight to the posterior annulus. So the annulus, so sometimes the annulus will fail, sometimes the annulus still remain intact and it can produce a facet joint arthritis. That is the increase the axial load to the posterior aspect of vertebra which can result in facet joint syndrome. And if annulus fails, that will result in disc herniation. So if disc is herniating, that can impeach the nerve root and can produce radiculopathy. So if disc herniation occurs, it can produce radiculopathy. Here you can see the herniated material can compress the nerve roots. So nerve root compression will produce the radiculopathy. The types of disc prolapse can be classified into protrusion, extrusion and sequestration. So he can, here you can see it can get prolapsed or it can get extruded, it can get sequestrated. The material is completely out of the annulus. So what are the typical presentation? For L1 nerve root, it can produce an inguinal region pain. For L2 also inguinal pain or anterior thigh pain. L3 anterior thigh pain. L4 anterior thigh or anterior leg pain. L5 posterior lateral thigh or lateral leg pain. S1 it can produce a heel pain and S2 it can produce a buttock pain. For L1 there is no specific weakness. For L2 hip flexion and adduction weakness. For L3 knee extension, L4 knee extension. For L5 foot dorsiflexion will be weak. For S1 plantar flexion of foot. For S2 plantar flexion of foot and hip extension. So what is the investigation for lumbar disc prolapse? First one is the plane radiography or x-ray of lumbar spine AP lateral. Here you can see the normal disc space is reduced in this picture. So the narrowing of disc space is the first finding. Next one is the presence of osteophytes due to disc degeneration. And third one, there is loss of lumbar lordosis. 
Why? Because due to the increased paraspinal spasm, the normal load doses will be obliterated. Next investigation of choice is MRI. MRI is a very good investigation to visualize the herniated disc material and also to identify the relationship to the neural tissue and also to identify the intrathecal contents. You can see the disc is herniating into the spinal canal. That is the herniated disc. So it is in the L5-S1 junction. L5-S1 is the most common site of disc herniation. Next to L5-S1, L4-L5 is the most common site. And it is usually occurs between the age of 40 to 50 and it is more common in males. The treatment, surgical and conservative treatment. So conservative management, majority of disc collapse will be get settled by conservative management. The conservative treatment start with bed rest. So how to advise your patient regarding bed rest? Either to keep a pillow between two legs in lateral position or to keep a pillow under the knee in supine position. Relax the hamstrings. So what are the drugs of choice? Usually NSAIDs, that is non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and some muscle relaxant mood elevators and some anti-anxiety drugs usually given to patients. And physiotherapy like transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation and interferential therapies are usually given for 5 to 7 days. And exercise is very much important in low back gait, usually extension exercise, partial curls, knee rolls and extension control that are very important for your back muscle, paraspinal muscles. To strengthen the paraspinal muscle, you should start exercise after a 3 to 4 days of bed rest. What is indication of selective nerve root corticosteroid, transferaminal steroid injection? So indication when even after 6 weeks, the patient is still having the pain injecting the steroid into that site so the local inflammation will get settled down by the steroid so steroid is an anti-inflammatory drug so that will reduce the inflammation at the site so that will relieve the compression to the nerve root and reduce the radiculopathy so some patient will get better immediately after the steroid injections the surgical treatment of course to relieve the neural compression even after a steroid injection if patient is not getting better you can go for surgical treatment the 